Now, whomever is nominated to be the next Homeland Security Secretary will have to be approved by the Senate. It is very hard to get anything done on Capitol Hill these days, as shown in the new book, The Hill to Die On, The Battle for Congress and the Future of Trump's America. Politico reporters Jake Sherman and Anna Palmer wrote the book together. They have each covered Capitol Hill for nearly a decade, and this book is the result of 26 months of reporting. They interviewed senators, House members, White House aides, and... President Trump, good morning. Good morning. Not only is it full of information, it's a juicy read. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but first, let's talk yeah. about the news. Secretary Nielsen resigning. Who will be her replacement, and how hard will it be to get that person confirmed? Very difficult to get the person confirmed. I think that we know for a fact. People have mentioned Rick Perry, but Donald Trump seems to like acting secretaries at the moment. He believes that they have... He has more control over them, and they don't get too comfortable in the job, which is something, as you noted, we've seen a dozen cabinet secretaries leave, so it's something he likes. Mm -hmm. And they don't have to get confirmed, right. which is the key. Right. He also seems to like chaos, as you point out in your book. He likes to stir things up and keep everybody off balance, Anna. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think you saw him tweeting last night uh, about this. I mean, he's hard on the border. He likes to kind of almost like he's a Hollywood producer, right? He's changing the cast midstream when he doesn't think something is working out for him. This is what you guys say about Congress. It's unlike any other institution on earth, a remarkable place of democracy, but one of the pettiest collections of adults and teenage melodrama. For instance, Jake... Well, there are countless instances. <laughs> I know. Where do you this begin? Time. Yes. I, I think you could look from the top. I mean, I think Paul Ryan, former Speaker Paul Ryan, who left at the end of this congressional term, had a lot of problems with Donald Trump, yet got on his side. I mean, think about it this way Congress is 535 former high school class presidents. Yeah. And I think that's only been uh, aggravated or accentuated in Donald Trump's Washington, where you have an unpredictable chief executive who calls people at all hours of the night, ringing up members of Congress at all hours asking for their advice, and it's really a picture of chaos. And let me ask you about that, because President Trump, when he ran for president, said, I'm a deal maker. I know how to negotiate things. I have a special quality never before seen in Washington to get people to come to the table, and I may knock their heads together or cajole them, but I'm going to get things done. In practice, he's made a lot of phone calls, tells him, has chummy moments, but does he have the talent, has he applied the skill to actually get anything done in the hard business of actually getting things done? I think he doesn't deserve a very good grade, right? If you look at the first two years, which this book really details from Election Day 2016 through the midterm, through the shutdown, he really only had one bright spot, which was tax reform. And even tax reform, which we detail, was a partisan issue. They did not do it with any Democrats. So, yes, the president likes to say he's a dealmaker, but truly, he has not brought Democrats to the table to do anything really substantive. I'm fascinated with the relationship. You want to say something? I would just, I would just add to this that we were given really... Uh, amazing access. access because yes. President Trump, as we all know, uh, proclaims to not like the media, but members of Congress are very, very eager to talk to press. And we have, we had members of Congress allow us in meetings. We traveled with them around the country. We listened to their phone calls. We had recordings of their meetings, their emails, their memos. So we were really able to bring our readers inside of the process in D.C. I'll say a couple of times of, when I was reading the book, I thought, did people know you were there? But clearly <laughs> they did because it was, so, to Nora's word, juicy. I'm fascinated by Nancy Pelosi and Donald Trump. He seems to be fascinated with her, too. You said that uh, P Pelosi is Trump's polar opposite. What way? What do you mean? Yeah, I mean, if you look at, if Donald Trump loves chaos, Nancy Pelosi loves order. That's right. Uh, you know, I think one of the things that's very interesting is the reverence and respect that the president gives Nancy Pelosi. It is unlike any other member or figure when we talked to him and sat down with him when he was describing his relationship with members of Congress. Uh, clearly, Pelosi is the steady hand in Washington. She is the person who has the most power and control and is going to be the adult in the room. Her nickname is Nancy. That says something. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I think also on top of that, uh, she doesn't back down from the president. Yes. She stares him in the eye and says, this is where I'm going, this is what I want to do. And the president then is forced to back down, as we saw with the government shutdown. President Trump didn't get his border wall, and Nancy Pelosi won. You also detail Sean Hannity of Fox News being on a number of calls. Do those on the other end of the call know that he's also on the call? Yes. Periodically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think there, is, to weigh there, are moment, the there are moments where he weighs in, which we detail. Uh, but I think it was surprising to both of us how involved Sean Handy was, not just tweeting and maybe having conversations just with the president, but how involved he was on a more regular basis. I mean, we saw people leaving meetings on Capitol Hill picking up their cell phone and it's Sean Hannity calling. I mean, we saw this firsthand, so this isn't conjecture. What does that say to you all that he is that involved? What does that mean? It's, it, it's, 
it's unlike anything we've ever seen in our in our times covering Washington for a TV talk host to have such sway over the president of the United States is unusual. All right. The Hill to Die On is yeah. on sale now. Jake Sherman and Anna Palmer, thank you so much for Thanks. being with us.